Hello, everybody. It's John Kranz with Compass Games. It's great to have you here tonight, uh, episode 47, and it's January 14th, 2021. So we have a very special episode for you tonight. Uh, as always, we try to secure a designer interview, and I had particularly good fortune and good luck uh, this week because we could time our designer interview right around the time people are receiving their games, which, and we're talking about, of course, is Devil Boats. So I also want to let everybody know I've had a few questions recently. Some are still waiting for their Devil Boats order, whether you pre-ordered or ordered direct from Compass or you did your Kickstarter pledge. I just want to let you know that all, uh, all those direct orders have shipped out. So all orders are out. Uh, if you have any concerns about a status of an order, uh, you can send an email to sales at compassgames.com. So again, just happy to report uh, not only that all the games are out, but we'll also have the designer with us here in a moment. And I hope you'll have some questions in mind, especially if you have the game, if you have any questions about design approach, etc. Would love to uh, give Joe the usual Compass Games live treatment with you all uh, with the great job you do. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started by taking a quick look uh, at the latest news from Compass, and then we'll save the best for last with Joe. So first of all, the uh, website has been up to date for, I'd say, uh, well, at least the past week uh, was our last update, basically when we announced that Devil Boats was now shipping. So it's been probably about 10 days since the last update. Um, as an FYI coalition, which was just uh, on our Kickstarter. That's gonna be our next release for this month. And uh, I would say it's probably gonna be shipping around the time that we do our town hall session with uh, Bill Thomas next Thursday. So that one's coming very soon. And then we're gonna round out the month with Paper Wars issue 96, Rally Round the Flag. And then that's when the subscription actually ends for a paper war. So then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a, subs a subscription covering the next four issues, 97 uh, through 100. Um, also, just want to let you know that the website you see now is going to be changing pretty soon. So uh, there's been work underway to update and refresh our uh, website, moving it to a new platform with, uh, I think we'll have some better services. For example, in the catalog, we should have some categories. So if you're looking for solitaire games, you can just click on solitaire and you'll be able to find the solitaire games, etc. cetera. But uh, you might have to bear with us. It's gonna be a, a brand new site for us too, even though we're doing some testing with it uh, to, really, um, to really get the organization of the website down. You know, we're gonna be spending some time while it's live finishing that work up. And of course, we'll be looking for your uh, recommendations for the website, how we can even make it uh, better for you. And just a reminder, since I am showing the website in that left sidebar in that yellow box is our newsletter. We didn't send out a uh, update for this week since the last update was about Devil Boats. But again, if you just uh, submit your email address and hit the checkbox there uh, and subscribe, we'll hit your email box only say once a week with the latest news and information. So really hope you'll think of doing that. Also along the very top, there's still time left in our holiday catalog, which uh, again is gonna be ending end of January. So you have another little more than two weeks before the 35% uh, discount ends for all in stock items. And I know Bill mentioned uh, in a recent town hall, there's a few games that are gonna be going, uh, when they go out of print, we won't be reissuing them because they've been in print for several years. So if you go back to our 2020 uh, year in review, which was, I believe, the last uh, episode I did, you can see that uh, list of games that uh, once they're out, they'll be gone. But they'll still be available right now for 35% off if that's something you're still thinking about. And then at the very bottom right, where you see me saying, talk to us and waving there, that's a great way just to connect with us, give us your feedback uh your honest feedback give us uh, don't hold back on your punches let us know how we can serve you better this is another way we can connect with you our community so we always value and appreciate when you contact us through the talk to us uh, feature as well so uh, with that being said i also want to just take a moment to uh, give you a status update on what the focus is going to be at least as far as projects that i'm going to be uh focusing on for the next uh, few weeks. So actually uh, tomorrow, 
I'm going to be working with Bill and we're going to be really focusing in on projects that have been out there for a long time that we want to get wrapped up. So my focus is probably going to go from six to eight projects down to uh, three or four projects uh, over, say, a month period to really make sure we're clearing our backlog because those games are getting very close to being done for the printer. Um, so I just have to probably step away from daily interaction on all you know eight plus projects and just focus in on the few. So I'll just give you a quick update on what I know is going to happen, what the top two priorities are. And first, again, I want to thank everybody. We had over 15 proofreaders for the Korean War from Joe Bukowski. We've done multiple proofreading rounds and we're doing the final round right now. So that's the number one uh, game focus I'm going to have for the next week. And then the week after, it should be going to the printers. Uh, so it will meet our schedule for release. Uh, after that, or at the same time, uh, the second big focus is going to be the Third World War series. So we're actually going to be moving and starting the rules layout work uh, next week. And again, uh, with that rules layout work, uh, I'm going to have to uh, really focus in on that. Uh, there's two sets of rules as well. There's also the playbook, which has all the special rules and the scenarios across all four games from the Third World War series. So that's going to be uh, another primary focus. So those two are really, I'm going to be pretty much putting my full bandwidth on Korean War wrap up for a week and then Third World War series because we really want to get that game uh, released. Uh, a lot of people are waiting for it. It's gone very well. It's just taken a very long time to get done. So I'm going to try to not spread myself so thin so I can get through any tasks related to Third World War sooner rather than later. And then there are a host of other uh, projects I'm working on. Uh, some silver lining, I do want to mention, I did wrap up a project this week uh, with the help of Bob Cloyd and the artist Bruce Erian. So Victory at Sea, which is the John Edwards edition. I believe it's the 1992 original John Edwards edition. That is now officially off to the printer. So that is a check mark as a completed project. So that is uh, all done. Also, I spent this week uh, doing a final review of Bill Thomas on the Russian campaign game that he's gotten back. He's checking the final components from the printer. Uh, I've answered some questions he had and everything is pretty much a thumbs up. So Russian campaign is looking extremely good and it's already, again, the preview version came back and landed in Bill's basement uh, just recently. And I spent some time with him this week just to make sure everything checked out from a production standpoint. So really good news on the John Edwards front. And again, those those titles that have been out there for a while, Korean War is going to get wrapped up. Third World, Third World War series is going to get wrapped up. There's also Manassas. We, we did uh, hit a delay on the, uh, Manassas, and I'm going to be kicking that off again to get the counter sheets done. And that's the counter sheets are going to be worked on uh, next week. So that is going to be the third project that I will be focused on other than Korean War and Third World War series will be Manassas. And we'll be doing the counters because the map's basically done. Uh, so we want to get these other major components finished as well. And there's a few other languishing titles. Of course, you know which ones those are. Um, working right now to see what we can do with Tank Leader, Eastern Front. To, to, we've got a lot of the components done, actually. So we're actually getting to the, to the stage now where we just need uh, to get the rules uh, draft finalized so we can get it to layout. Uh, and then uh, we have Shoots Troopa. We're going to start playtesting next week of Shoots Troopa, but I'll probably step away from that role and have somebody else in charge of playtesting for Shoots Troopa uh, because, again, that's one that's not as urgent as these other big games. So I've covered quite a bit there. Let me just make sure, see if there's, I haven't checked the questions or comments coming in. So let me just check those really quickly if you had any questions for the items I just raised. So let's see here. Looks, uh, looks like we're okay. Devil Boats, we, we all got Devil Boats on our mind, so wonderful. Devil Boats ordered, wonderful. Thank you, Andy, for ordering Devil Boats. So I think, uh, yeah, I think that's a good update for now. So again, I'm going to have more information on projects uh, definitely in two weeks at the next Compass Games live session, but I just want to let you know I'm going to be changing my focus a little bit because we've got two projects we absolutely have to get out the door. Uh, and then uh, there's a few others uh, that will be also uh, moving along that uh, we've been waiting on. So without further ado, what I'd like to do is introduce to you our special guest, uh, Joe Carter. So let's go ahead and bring uh, Joe Carter in here right. so we can say hello. How are you doing, Joe? Oh, good, John. Thanks. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us today. And I always like to ask where you're joining us from today. Uh, I'm from Japan. Uh, you're visiting, uh, you're joining us from Japan. There you go. And, so you're, you must be. Yeah. 
doing some research on Devil's Boat in Japan, in the region. You're you're yeah, on site. I'm a, I'm a I'm a spy. You're a spy. Or well, you're going to have to share with us all here. I don't know how many people know you live in Japan. So could you tell us a little bit about uh, how much time you spent in Japan and how that came about, how it came to be for uh, you as an American? 15, year, uh, 15 years now. And um, my, I met my wife in the U.S. and she was a, a foreign exchange student and a uh, college student. And uh, we got married and uh, we moved here. And, and the rest and is your, history. And you're <laughs> Japanese. How's the Japanese language going for you? How are you able to do uh, uh, with that? It's difficult. Yeah, especially the reading and writing. I, I've yeah. always had a hard time with it. So that's got to uh, that's got to be tough. Yeah, it's got to be tough. Well, I know we're going to talk about Devil Boats. Everybody wants to talk about that. But I always like asking just a few questions because uh, I believe, is it correct that Devil Boats is your first uh, published design? Would that be accurate? Yes, that's, it's the first one. Okay, so how did you go from a gamer to a designer? Did that just like happen? Boom, something, you touch an electric socket and boom, you're a designer? Or how, no. did, how did that happen? It wasn't quite like that. Um, I, I had been... Um, playing uh, solitaire war games for maybe four or five years now okay since i was a child um i had uh, i think it was fight in the skies uh, world war one hmm. uh, i think 1980 81 I wonder if that's the I nova uh, that's not the nova games that's i wonder if that's 3w somebody will help me here that online. was it yes tsr i think. tsr fight in the skies i i know what the box looks like in my head now maybe, got it perfect yeah so that was my last game until I got into it as an adult. And um, so anyway, I, I had um, I had bought a bunch of Greg's Gregory Smith's games, you know, my mm. my favorite game designer. And um, he uh, he inspired me. I, I was making a bunch of add ons, mm. user created add ons and posting them on Board Game Geek. Right. Uh, for a few years, actually, and also for Target for today. Uh, that's another one of my favorite games. That's from Legion War and, Games, I believe, correct? Legion yes. War Games? Yeah. Who's the and, designer? Um, is that Kim Kinger? Is Kim Kinger the designer? I, I, I forgot it's who. Steve Dixon and um, I think it's Steve Dixon. Steve Dixon. So, yeah, I want to make sure we designer, gave credit to yeah. the designer. Okay, absolutely. So a lot of yeah. solitaire and games. And then also, yeah, also... Um, Let's see, um, B29, I also made a bunch of add-ons for that also. So that that kind of, eventually I thought, why not, you know, I, I watched um, They Were Expendable, uh, the movie, uh, one day, and I thought, you know what, why don't I make a PT boat game? I think I can do it. And um, I, I decided to just try it, and it took, it took a long time. <laughs> And a lot of, of course, hard work, um, but uh, I had some great play testers and uh, some people who contributed to the well, design ideas and stuff. Well, that's great. Let's, let me do this. Let me share for everybody so they see what we're talking about. I want to share uh, just from the product page. So we've got Devil Boats here, obviously. Uh, sounds like a lot of people received the game. Uh, and then uh, for everybody else that ordered direct, it's definitely on the way already. So uh, we've got the cover there. It's PT Boats and the Solomons. I believe it's 43. It's a limit. It's the 40 summer months of 1943. I see that on the box uh, cover. Then uh, we've got the counter sheet. This is one of the counter sheets, not all of them, I believe. Is that correct? Or is this this? No, that's it. Just one sheet. It's one double sheet. sided. Okay, we've got the crew. I see we got the crew members. Oh, no, no, no. actually, no. The, this is the old one. Um, the the new ah. the actual production has the rounded corners, so it is actually two sheets, but they're ah. more spread out because of the rounded corners. Okay, I'm going to have to update the website then. So I don't know if these are up to date right. then, because uh, <laughs> these might be uh, these might be draft. These could be drafts yeah, as well. This is this is the old one. Yeah, the the new okay. ones are the a little bit different so okay we're not going to spend too much time on that what i want to do is al grand posted on facebook uh today and i'll go full screen view here so everybody can see it so this is this is pretty much the full package so he went ahead and opened it up you can see you're right it's the two counter sheets now with the rounded corners you can see those uh, propped up at the back there uh we've got the, the uh area maps we've got the mission map you got the uh the boat itself pt boats on the right he did a great job here. He's showing the back of the box with the front and also the rules and the various roster display. So 
Uh, this, this, and we actually, I think we had fun last week talking about Bill was talking about your game and talking about the dry erase markers. And <laughs> I was teasing him, why doesn't it have a compass logo on the dry erase markers? That was a great opportunity to brand it. He said, no, no, it's extra and all it takes too long. So yeah, we didn't, we didn't get the uh, emblems on the dry erase markers. So unfortunately, but th- this is, I just want to thank uh, Al Grand. I don't know if he's here joining us on Facebook live tonight, but he did a great job. He shared this. I think he was just trying to make everybody jealous on Facebook. Uh, basically, that he uh, received the game um, as well. And also, I uh, just want to share here for everybody uh, that doesn't have the rules yet, on our on our Kickstarter, you can actually download the PDF of the rules uh, from our product page, but over on Kickstarter, and you can still go to the Kickstarter page for the campaign that ended, um, we have this special view of the uh, rules that you can go through. So it's just basically using a special online reader, but there is a download button right where the Compass logo is in the upper left-hand side that will give you that PDF everybody wants to print out. But uh, great job on the rules here. So this is a lot of illustrations, talking about the crewman skills. Definitely want to get into the design aspects here with you, but just wanted to give everybody a chance. I just want to flip through the rules here to give everybody an idea of what the rules look like. But again, these rules are available. They're all available online, either as a direct PDF uh, download from our website or in this viewer here, which I access from our quick starter page. So uh, it doesn't look overly complex, a lot of charts and tables, which doesn't surprise me. Reminds me of Gregory Smith's games uh, that you need to do to uh, resolve situations. So yeah, overall looks to be a really, um, really impressive package overall. So tell us a little bit about the design. So where did you get the idea for this design in terms of the subject matter? What made you to decide? What made you decide to settle on PT boats in the Pacific and also your game system approach? Well, I, like I told you, I uh, had watched, uh, they were expendable, the, the movie. I think mm-hmm. it's 19, was it 1945? I haven't, I haven't it, seen that movie no. yet. Oh boy. Okay. I have to okay. watch it. But that was actually um, the Philippines of PT boats, but that, that inspired me and gave me the idea uh, because I, I'm kind of interested in the Pacific World War II uh, theater. And I, I, I realized there were no, uh, there were no games, uh, solitaire war games on the subject, at least no, uh, re- no recent ones. So I decided to just start, uh, just start making, you know, start working on it. And I wasn't sure if I could do it or not, because uh, it was a huge project, um, you know, and, and the, the target for today um, tables uh, game engine, the way he, Steve did the, the, the tables really um, inspired me, which he, he got the idea from uh, B-17. B-17 was the original. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that's where he kind of was inspired by the original. So B-17 kind of started it all with the, the table layouts and stuff. Okay. B-17. I believe. Yep. Yep. Yeah, a long time ago, what, 19, what, 1983 yep. or 82 or something. And um, so I was really impressed with that, that, that system. And I thought I could uh, expand on it. And because uh, so what I did was just basically make a bunch of uh, tables. And um, you, you know, what I did was instead of having a, a, a separate full rule book, um, I basically integrated most of probably 90% of the rules into the tables as notes. Right. So I'm getting older. <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> and um, my memory is not as good as it used to be. <laughs> so I'm almost 50 now. So I'm hitting that age. And oh, um, so, so basically anybody can just pick up the, the game and s- start playing it without memorization or uh, having to, to spend several hours reading, uh, looking through a rule book because the rules are always right in front of them. They, they have to do a lot of reading Yeah, uh, because there are a lot of notes. Uh, I'm going to be honest, but what, what's great about it is the game is quite detailed, but like I said, there's basically no memorization of rules. So it's really cool that I can cr- I could create a very detailed game that you don't have to memorize things. Was that something you expected would happen? Because I would think if I'm yeah, getting that, a design- that was, that was yeah. on purpose. That, so, that oh great. Like I said, I yeah, I don't like to be honest, I don't like war games where I have to memorize 
like 200 different tiny rules. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you don't play it, if you don't play it in a while, then you forget and you have to like relearn the game again. And I, I didn't want to do that. So um, that's why the table section is, is fairly thick. I believe yeah. it's 30, what was it? 30 something pages. Okay. And double devil's boat, uh, devil boats. So, but it's all there. So anyway, I, to, I think it, yeah. wor- it worked out pretty well, I think. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be great to get. Uh, I know we're going to get a lot of gamer feedback. Obviously, they're just getting the game now, just starting to get their feet wet with it. I think uh, the Constant World News Desk has posted maybe just two replays so far that have been posted there. I haven't seen too many replays posted in other sites yet, although I've seen on Facebook people mention the game. But I think we're probably just at the tip of the iceberg. I think like the people here as well, uh, maybe people here can uh, comment here and I'll, I'll show those comments, but I'm curious how many people here have actually uh, received your game already. And if those that have the game can comment on that, I'll be curious how many have actually had a chance to try and play it yet. Cause I think we just started shipping a little over a week ago, which means uh, at most people have had the game maybe for a week or less. So I think the gameplay is going to be, I think, I think this is the calm before the storm and, and all the gameplay Questions on comments are going to be coming in the next few weeks. And uh, and I don't think you have your game yet because you're over in Japan with shipping and everything. <laughs> I'm going to be the last one to get the game, I think. So you're the last person that's going to get your own design because the you're a designer. Over in, I know. No, no so special the, treatment. Now. Loving the life in Japan but not getting your game. That, that's that's pretty brutal, right. isn't it? So, <laughs> But you've got, you've got all the components at least, so at least you know what everybody's receiving so you can at least comment on right. that, I guess. Can you share with people that might not be familiar yet with the game? Can you explain how the mechanics work? Like, is it based on missions or is it crew members or what, what's the objective? What's the overall objectives of the game? How is it laid out? And what are the, what are some of the key mechanics or aspects to play? Um, it's, it's basically covers three months um, during 1943. That was the busiest time in, in the Solomon islands um, from uh july uh until uh october 1st from like july 1st until october 1st 1943 Mm -hmm. and uh there are three game lengths there are three campaign lengths there's a short medium and long so the the long uh starts on july 1st i believe and uh the medium game length starts in august 1st and the short one starts uh, september 1st so um, basically the goal of the game is to uh, sink as many uh, Japanese supply barges as uh, possible within that time period and don't uh, try not to lose too many PT boats. Uh, because as a squadron commander, uh, if you lose too many, you'll be put uh, before a board of inquiry and um, you might lose your command uh, if if you if they find that you're being too reckless mm. and losing too many boats, so it's all about it's all about conducting missions and I think having a set crew, having your set. Personnel, yes, yes, correct? you you have a. a it, I I kind of did a hybrid system for the squadron. I couldn't do uh, four detailed uh, PT boats because that would have been too much. Right. So the main focus is on PT boat number one. Uh, that's the player's boat. Okay. And there's a, a, a crewman placement board. Um, okay, I don't have the actual production game, but this is the playtest uh, mat that I yep. use during development. Yep. And this is the squad, uh, the, the PT crewman uh, placement board for PT boat uh, number one. Mm-hmm. And um, the, the other three boats in the squadron are more... Um, you know, they're, they're not as detailed. They only right. have, um, they're abstracted basically. And they right. only have, um, you know, crew as a single crew. Right. And, um, and the damage is just, uh, um, systems and flooding only. Gotcha. There's no I, damage modeling on the other three boats. I'm trying to think of a potential add on here. Just, just, uh, I'm just thinking out of the box here. So it's all PT boat number one, you said. So they're everybody who gets the game, it's the same crew. So this isn't, this isn't a case where you're going to get two or three guys together on a weekend and one has boat one, boat two, boat three, because they all have. Well, basically- you could actually, yeah, the, there are the alternate uh, multiplayer rules, uh, I oh, believe okay. included in, in the, the rule book. 
uh, but the, they they do need multiple copies of the game. Um, yeah, yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, I was just thinking because uh, of Greg Smith's games, which you made. There's the ideas where you can run the subs or what have you. And what you said, there's so much detail for PT boat. Number one, I wonder what it would be like if you had my, if I had my friends over, had colleagues, had two or three people over, we could run a mission or say three of the four boats from the players playing each a boat. Um, that'd be, right. that'd be interesting. Pro anyway. so. Probably the ideally maximum players should be two because there, oh, there's okay. downtime. Uh, if it's a oh, special okay. mission, um, some of the special missions, there are only two boats assigned. Mm. So, uh, you know, if there's three players, maybe I guess they could roll for the enemy rolls, like or something like that. Uh, but it's possible to do even four boats, but probably ideally I would say two for multiplayer. Okay, great. Listen, I want to throw some questions at you or actually we have some comments. So I think the first one's a question from John Longshore who's joining us on YouTube tonight. Thank you, John. So John's uh, probably pretty much in my boat because I, I haven't even seen that movie you mentioned. So so he uh, being, to and I'm gonna speak for myself, I'm pretty much totally ignorant about the naval things of PT boats. So uh, not really knowing the purpose of PT boats for these missions, how, how they affected overall campaigns, what their role was during the war. Could you touch upon uh, what the role of the PT boats were? Well, I, I'm not an expert, to be honest. <laughs> I've read a lot about PT boats, sure. but yeah. I believe they were for, they were designed as a support role, um, from what I understand. Not really an offensive uh, weapon. Um, especially they were under, the, the American uh, PT boats uh, in the beginning were very undergunned. And I think, they, they I think Richard, I, th I think Richard agrees with you on YouTube. He said PT boats were expendable. So I yeah, translate. Absolutely. So <laughs> absolutely. So there you go. Uh, Richard. Yeah, they, they were cheap, cheap to construct, you know, made of, uh, I believe mahogany. I don't remember what type of wood that yep. they used, but that's what Mo, that's they, what they Mo were saying here. Yeah. They're yeah, cheap, they fast, quick, quick, quick and cheap. And, uh, like the movie title, they were expendable. So, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, they they were undergunned, um, especially um, you know in, in 1943. Um, they were undergunned, and sorry about that. That's somebody ringing the bell. Oh no and, problem. Um, they have to get it. They can join. They, they can join the broadcast. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, they they were undergunned, and um, he, he, like uh, John F. Kennedy's PT 109, they actually strapped a 37 millimeter. Uh, cannon to the front of the, their boat on the that, that very oh, night uh, on August 1st that it, they were rammed. Uh, wow. And um, so they, they were very undergunned uh, when trying to take out the, uh, the, the armored uh, Japanese barges. The 50 caliber uh, twin turrets uh, had a very, very hard time uh, sinking them. Uh, so the, the game includes uh, two uh, cannons besides the uh, the 50 caliber uh, twin turrets. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Jack's asking over on YouTube: Is uh, JFK a crew member in the game? Well, there's a there's a, a there are two tables for first and last name uh, for family and first name uh, ge generator to generate crewman names. You can just choose uh, John F. Kennedy's name. And you can choose a 109 for uh, the, the, the PT boat number one uh, number. Gotcha. And then can you mention for us, I understand uh, uh, with Tai Bamba, the editor of Paper Wars, there might be some uh, additional content coming in support. Yeah, of there, there's, uh, I, I created two add-ons. Um, one is uh, a PT 109 uh, scenario which can be played as the first mission mm. of a medium campaign game because that starts on August 1st. So that's the first, that's, that's the day that uh, John F. Kennedy's uh, uh, PT-109 uh, was rammed by the mm. Japanese destroyer. And, um, or it can be played as a standalone mission. And um, there's also a, um, another add-on I created that it, it uh, makes a unit enemy, uh, not enemy, all units order of attack uh, randomized. 
So basically, uh, in the game now, originally, the enemy always attacks, usually fires first, mm -hmm. unless uh, the PT boat is, uh, squadron is uh, undetected. Uh, they can usually fire first. But once the PT boat is detected, PT boats are detected, usually um, the, the enemy fires first each combat round. So what this add-on does is uh, it, it has a bunch of customized uh, game counters and you put it in a draw cup mm -hmm. and you basically draw the randomized order to see whether which PT boat or which enemy unit fires first. So that adds a little bit of uncertainty uh, to the game each combat round. And then uh, Jack, I, I think you mentioned this already. So there is no JFK counter in the game, right? Because it's, uh, you're, you're right, creating there's no. Right, right. Okay. And then cool uh, since you mentioned, you mentioned Gregory Smith, so hopefully he didn't hear all the horrible things you said about him <laughs> hey, at the beginning. Hey, Greg's, Greg's watching. Yeah. My favorite so, uh, game designer. Great. Have you had any contact with Greg? Uh, with his, oh, I guess yeah, so, with yeah, the, yeah, the add-ons, right? With all the add-ons. We've talked did, a right? lot. Yeah. Greg's a great guy. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, New York Raider fan in New York wants to know when you're going to be doing the Godzilla mission for the PT boat <laughs> since you're in Japan. <laughs> Working on it. <laughs> okay, and, and then this is something that's on me. Uh, Steve O brought up. I forgot to. Uh, we were talking about this thing uh, we're doing now, but uh, uh, over on the Constant World forum, we have individual game discussions. So maybe we can set up a. Uh, right. I, I I saw his post on the uh, the other uh, site. I can't remember the name now, uh, but I couldn't figure it out actually. Oh, it's. A, I can help uh, you with so, that. Maybe it was Discord. Yeah, maybe too. you we can have... help me. I, I searched and I couldn't find where. where no, I I'll help you. I'll help you with that. Uh, if, and maybe it's the form because it's like 20 years old. And as people would say, the interface is not that user friendly. So, uh, yeah, I totally get it. So I'll, I'll help you. So, Steve, since Steve asked this question here, hey, Steve, I will I will definitely follow up with Joe over the weekend, early next week. We'll, we'll get that topic going on Constant World Forum so people can start talking about uh, your game with you, Joe. So I'll help you with the forum. And then I don't know, uh, I believe you're, yeah, you're also on Discord, which is the Compass Discord server or channel. Right. So I'll, I'll check with you. And uh, I think you've got that down. Maybe not. If not, I'll, I'll be glad to help you over there as well. So, uh, so great. Okay. So we, we, uh, we've got the bases covered for uh, Devil Boats. So what I want to do is I want to give people a chance if they want to come up with any questions about Devil Boats. I know Brian's made the okay, comment. Let me, before yep. I forget, these are, the I books. just want to show the books. Yeah. These are yep, the books absolutely. I used during the development for reference. This is uh, yep. PT-109 by yep. um, Doyle, yeah, William Doyle. And this that's is probably the most book. popular one, isn't it? I think that's the most popular yeah, one. In very, very detailed. Yeah, really good. And then uh, this is a second book I used. Uh, this is PT-109 by um, Dick Kerosy. Oh, 105. Oh, 105 I mean, PT-105, sorry, yeah, yeah, 105. Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen yeah, that one before. A, yeah, yeah, this is a great book, too. And then the, this is a really good, this one really helped me, Close Quarters. Oh, look at by, that. PT, um, look at that. Yeah. Very what good. Yep. By Robert Bul Bulkley. Yeah, Bulkley. So, so if you had... These if you, three books are the main... If you could only pick one book, if you could only pick one book out of the three, would it be that first one you showed, that the one that everybody? Yeah, has? it'd be the third one. Uh, it oh. depends because this one was more detailed about the uh, the the part that um, of the game that the time period that the game covers. Uh, it talks quite a bit about the attacking the um, the barges, but but so actually, uh, John F. Kennedy's. Um, book also kind of covers that same just covers a, a few days before the the event happened but uh, this was probably the most helpful book for me at close quarters interesting i haven't seen that game. one before i haven't seen that one before so that's good to know there aren't there aren't too many pt book uh, books actually it's kind of an overlooked subject in my opinion how, how was that movie you mentioned is it just a good classic movie from back in the day and just got you yeah motivated? it has john wayne and um can't remember his name, yeah, but it basically covers the um, 1941, early 1942, um, when when the Japanese uh, attacked the Philippines and they had to evacuate um, Mo General MacArthur and, and everything. So they were okay. very short of PT boats, but okay. it's a different time period and location than the game. Okay. Still now, is there? 
Now, I know we have to cover a few more things. Is there anything else I forgot to ask about um, Devil Boat? I think I think we've covered the majority of it. A lot of people are just getting the game. Is there anything I forgot to ask you or you'd like to mention before we move on and talk mm. about some of your other projects? I just wanted to say thank you for everyone for your support. This was my first game title, and, um, and I want to say thanks to Bill um, Thomas for... Um, yeah, Bill. You Bill know, reports take, to me. By take, the way, nobody nobody knows that, but Bill reports to me. So. <laughs> I'm just. I kidding. want to say thanks to him for take, taking the the yeah. chance on on my first game design. Well, we're we're and, always uh, excited to work with new designers, and uh, we 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 saw your work, and we knew it was going to be. We knew it was going to be good, but we didn't expect. To be honest, we were surprised by the strong response, the number of pre orders, and even the Kickstarter by itself pretty much blew away our yeah. other Kickstarter. So it was very. Uh, and I, you know. You know, dry erase markers. It's, it's all it's all about the dry erase markers. Yeah, that that's that's because I have a a, a a certain game, couple of games I don't want to mention, but they're real paper hogs, and um, each each mission you have to use you know a lot of paper. So I didn't want to yeah. do that. Um, so I wanted something reusable, and if people do want to use paper, they can just photocopy the. Yeah. Yeah, those those laminated sheets. So they could still have paper if they want. Okay, so we just got our official segue call here, uh, Joe. So Michael's asking on Facebook, do you have any other games you'd like to do? Hmm. Okay, that I'm going to treat that as a segue that we're going to talk about a few other things now. So so let's do this. Let me get this set up here. So we do want to talk about uh, actually what I believe will be your next release from uh, Compass Games. Actually, you have a few that are basically done, uh, as I understand it. Yeah, uh, let's, yes, let's... I have three, three more that are finished so, already. So, so. following uh, following the PT uh, Devil Boats craze, which we're witnessing right now, uh, tell us a little bit about Schnell Boats, which is a nice little combination German-English play on the title, Scourge yeah, of the English Channel, mixed, right? Mixed title, yeah. Um, it basically covers uh, German uh, torpedo boats, uh, S, S model S100s, uh, during the year uh, 19, uh, from 1943 to 1944. And um, it, it's based on the Devil Boats game engine. Yep. And um, it's, it's, it's detailed, very uh, detailed damage modeling, just like uh, Devil Boats. But it takes place in the English Channel. Um, here's a here's a play test. Uh, okay, let me uh, zoom in map. on you there just for. Okay, there's the play test okay, map play right test, there. Sorry, for... the reflection. I can't... Yep, no this problem. This is the play test map, and um, it, it covers the English Channel, and yep. it's it's kind of the same as Devil Boats, but it's different. As in, there are things like um, mine lane missions, special missions, and yep. um, it. You know, it's it's maybe a little more difficult to to survive in in mm. uh, snow boats because a lot of snow boats were lost uh, during that time period, a whole bunch. So many more than the PT boats. Yeah, that's really PT interesting. Boats. So that so that's why I was going to ask you, and I think maybe you've already answered it or partially answered it. I was going to ask you, what did you find different? Or or, re or reflections of the English Channel and the German and the Doctrine, what changes were you uh, consciously making to the Devil Boat system to accommodate this new subject matter uh, for the English, for Schnell Boats? Well, it, it, I, I re read a lot, of course, and I, I try to stick to the basic system, but um, there are a few differences. Um, for one, when you engage uh, enemies, they can be, um, they can be, let me, let me get the mat here real quick. They can be uh, encountered in any zone. Like in double boats, you can only be encounter enemy surface units in red. Okay. But in dog boats and schnell boats, oh, I don't want to mention dog boats yet, sorry. In That's schnell right. boats, <laughs> you can, so I'm getting ahead of myself. In schnell boats, you can uh, encounter enemy surface units in any zone color. But there are, any, it's an increased okay. increased chance in the red and then a little bit increased in yellow and pretty much unlikely in the green. 
Okay. But so that's one main difference. Yeah, that's a fundamental and, and change. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another really big difference is when you encounter enemy surface units, um, there you can't just automatically withdraw from from combat. Like you can't just leave. Oh, I'm going to make a U-turn and and zoom out of the uh, you know on the combat board, for example. Let's see if I can okay. find a combat board. Okay, this is a combat board surface combat board so you can like say oh i'm gonna make a u-turn yeah and i'm gonna go to long range zone one one combat round and then i'm gonna just leave the next combat round in in snowboats you can't do that because they are the enemy units might be pursuing per, pursuing you right so you have to attempt to escape you can get trapped and um it, it really makes the game challenging if you're you know, if your boat gets damaged. Right. Um, so another, another change is the, the snow boats had, uh, uh, never mind. That's the other game. I don't want to. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, we'll talk about the other one too. I'm but getting, getting myself let me, confused. I know here, we've got so. quite a few titles here. So let me zoom in so everybody can enjoy the box art. So it's not on pre-order yet. So obviously our goal is to get it on pre-order, uh, most likely this quarter is when we'll get it on pre-order or obviously uh, Q2 at the very latest, because this is something we look, we'd like to get in print uh, by end of the year. I think it's very important as Compass to, uh, when you have a successful debut of a new system, you want to back it up with a new game uh, based on that series or sooner rather than later. So obviously this has high priority. I also have here a map. Uh, do you want to talk about this map? This is, I think the first time you saw this was today, correct? Yeah, I just, yeah, uh, this is the first time. I, I believe, maybe I might have seen it, but I believe this might be the first time. So this looks familiar uh, to your play test with the colors, the different colors you were talking about, about yeah, engagement. So I can see yeah, that Yeah, it, it, sticks, it sticks pretty close to the Devil Boats um, style, which which I like. Bruce Urian did a great job with uh, yeah. Devil Boats. So he's also doing the artwork for uh, Snow Boats, which is really great. I like to have the same artist yeah, that absolutely. Just, it makes it consistent. It, it right. actually helps to have the same people involved across projects. And I'll just go to this last one if you want to explain what we have here with the S boat type 100 here. Yeah, that's at. the a crewman placement mat. And um, uh, this mat w will be larger than the um, the devil boats mat uh, just because the boat is larger. <clears throat> gotcha. So you're going to have a few extra crewmen in the engine room. Uh, engineer crews. Um, Devil Boats only has a single one, but this has, uh, I believe, three extra. She has a chief engineer plus three. Is it two or three? I don't remember the yeah. other game. Yeah. Okay. So we, yeah, we have uh, engineer crews plus or engine crews plus a uh, chief engineer. Yeah. Looks real nice so in detail different. there. Yeah. And then so I the, want everybody. The, 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 Oh, I'm sorry. The yeah, snowboat yeah, also good. has uh, depth charges, and um, the S100 also has depth charges and mines. Oh, this looks great. So this is, uh, yeah, so definitely here for uh, for snail boats. This will be the next uh, release in your uh, series yeah. of the Devil Boats game. I, so I believe one... the artwork is coming along very well. Yep, you, right we now. can see some of the artwork is already underway. So uh, I think we're on, on track, absolutely, for... Uh, later this year to release the game. Uh, what other games uh, that you're working on can you tell us about? I think one got uh, one slipped on your tongue a little bit there. I think you, yeah. you can remember what it was. Um, another, another one is the Dog Boats, and it's um, it's also based on the Devil Boats uh, game engine. <clears throat> so it covers the Royal Navy um, attack boats um, during World War II in the English Channel and the North Sea. And um, it, this this game is going to, going to include two different boats, uh, the Fair Mile D uh, gunboat, and um, it's also going to cover the. Uh, let me see, just a second. I have the name on my computer. Yeah, the okay. uh, Vosper seventy-two foot torpedo boat. So it feet. will actually have two different playable boats. Uh, this is the play test. For the uh, the Vosper, this is the torpedo boat. This yeah, is the crew good. replacement mat, and it's pretty small, small boat, mm -hmm. and maybe about the same size as uh, actually smaller than the um, Elko eighty foot American torpedo boat. 
And then you also have the large, I can find it here, just a second. Sure. No problem. Also has the large, this is the Fairmile D. Probably can't see it, it's too big. Oh, but that's how we can the, see it pretty good, yeah. Yep. Okay, this is a Fairmile yeah. D. This is much bigger than the uh, Vosper. Wow, look at that. Oh, and then this that. is a gunboat. This is heavily armed. Wow. <laughs> uh, gunboat. <laughs> so you, you'll have two different choices. And um, also for, there will be two different patrol areas. Okay. The, uh, you're going to have the, this is a 52, 52nd MTB uh, flotilla. Okay. And this is the English Channel, which you would be doing the MTB boats, motor torpedo boats. And then it also is going to cover the North Sea. Ah, wow, the North Sea, very to, nice. Very nice. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think, I don't remember actually, but I think this um, English Channel, you can uh, play as either the, uh, the torpedo boat or the uh, gun boat. And then this would only be the torpedo boat, very I nice. believe. I haven't played this in quite a while, so I kind of forgot. And these I are basically, that. these designs are basically done. I mean, unless you tweak it. Yeah, everything's, yeah everything's, everything's finished. And everything's finished. So thoroughly, okay. thoroughly play tested. Yeah. Okay, so there's another so, project that I know we talked about recently, well, maybe a few months ago that, we, uh, that we're looking forward to right. doing. Can, you, can we yeah, talk about it? Yeah, I know you've done a lot of posts on Facebook about it, so it won't be a big surprise to everybody, but it's a little different speed than... Uh, Say devil boats or PT boats. So right, it's called the the golden age of piracy, seventeen eighteen, and it's basically a, a pirate game, and based on oh. the same game engine. Awesome! Again. <laughs> I'm, I'm all for that. All for pirates. <laughs> yeah, so it'll it's, be fun. It's, it's finished. It's already finished, basically, and it's been, it's been being thoroughly play tested. Also, a lot of play testers. That's great. That's great. So, well, we got some. Um, we got. We got some questions, gosh, coming in since you mentioned. Oh, let, let me mention one more thing. Yes. Um, yeah, please. It's do. basically the, uh, Sid Meier's Pirates uh, PC game inspired mm. me to create it. And it has a lot of features from that game. Um, so a lot of people will find that familiar, that style. I think it's, it's going to be a very popular game, uh, an interesting theme to do with the Devil Boat system. Right, and yeah. I think it's it's a very suitable, <laughs> it's a very good crossover title for uh when we do, comes to the Kickstarter, when we also market on Kickstarter, it it's gonna really gravitate and do well there. I think, given the, the subject matter, oh, I've got a host of questions and comments for you because we started talking about these other games you're doing. So let me see if I can catch up. So Tim Porter was mentioning we need games on MTBs uh, included, or a scenario or the Channel Dash. I don't know if you have any comments on that suggestion from Tim Porter. And here's oh, another gosh, one, uh, Canadian, uh, they're the Canadians basically with the six pounders on them. So maybe you haven't had a chance to research the Canadians, uh, but I guess they had a role to play. Uh, yeah, so. uh, yeah, yeah, this, the, the, the dog boats would only um, include the Royal Navy uh, MTVs. So I'm, I'm okay. not sure what the Canadian okay. boats would. All right, no problem. Just, uh, that's just some notes they want to throw your way. And then actually somebody says here, Michael says he knew somebody who was a captain in a boat, just mentioned in the English Channel. So that's, <laughs> that's pretty amazing to hear, to hear that. Uh, Steve also uh, wants to say imp impressive uh, that you've tackled the series on your own. Uh, I know you've had some great playtester help, like you said. You've got a lot of great support as well. But, uh, yeah, you took the initiative to do the, from those add-ons you did for Greg and other games uh, you have really stepped up and you've got a great series coming with Schnell, Schnell boats coming next. So we're all well, excited thank you. about thank that. Thank you very much. And then here's a funny, interesting comment from John Longshore and the Italians only get a little bicycle pedals attached to the torpedo. So uh, I know there was a design by Dan Viersen games that was done on torpedo on, on yeah, the torpedo boats, Italians. So I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with that game that was done recently. Uh, yeah, I, 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 think so yeah maybe so yeah and then uh, here's another one asking about the israeli gunboats as a logical step to maybe a more contemporary treatment using your well, system that would be interesting but that, that's an interesting yeah, idea also. jack has there i think that's that's an interesting idea um some just sharing richard sharing some information here schnell boat slipped through a brit destroyer screen and sank several lsts that carried usgi's oh yes. landings Wow. Yes, 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 yes. Now I, I'm, I'm, 
I have a brain freeze this morning. Sorry. Um, no yeah, actually, that's included in the game. Um, oh, it's included. It's that, that, that as whole... a possible. Yeah. Wow. As a, okay. just one one time deal. OK. And then uh, Brian's asking here, any plans for Italian PT boats? Um, not not at the moment, but okay. uh, it's possible in the future. And then somebody wants the boats from Vietnam. Another again, moving ahead. Yes, uh, I actually I had started working on a game for that. Um, the, the only problem is uh, I don't have the the references books for references right now. So, oh, yeah, sounds good. And then pirates, we just touched upon the pirates game. So, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of comments uh, on that. You know, the fun post uh, you made about the pirates game, pirates life for me. Uh, and yeah, as long as there's no dancing, Fango says over on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, but was his fa somebody's favorite game as a kid was that Pirates game by Sid Meier, uh, by the way. So, yeah, thumbs up for Mo, who's joining us, who's also helping us with the after party that we're going to do in, on the Discord channel right when we're done here. But, uh, yeah, Sid Meier's Pirates game is extremely popular, so that's uh, very cool. And then uh, this one's interesting. There was a government uh, muzzle uh, shutdown put on the Operation Bloke. It didn't surface for many years until after it happened. So uh, pretty Pretty interesting stuff there. And then uh, Ray's still pushing for that sequel with Canadian MTB, so he's not letting you off the hook. He wants the Canadians <laughs> in there. And Mo, thanks for the... I did forget the title, so thanks to Mo for... I mean, I've seen so many right. posts on Stealth and by Stealth and C, but this, the name was escaping me. So, so yeah, very, very cool, very exciting uh, about that. And then there's something here, Brownwater Navy is the one you need for Vietnam books. I think... Uh, that might be right. a book. Is that maybe the book title? Yeah, or? that's the book title. I've seen the book title, but I don't. You've seen don't that book. The book. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. So we're going to be keeping you busy for a while. I take it. So uh, we're putting you on the Gregory M. Smith tra trajectory on the on the little purveyor belt with the you know the right. the hamsters pedaling. But you've already got all these designs done. You're like Greg. He's got all these designs done, and I'm here. I'm here with Bill trying to catch up on projects. Like, okay, let's just get these done. Let's get these out of the way finally. And then uh, we've got all these exciting, exciting projects in store for us. So it's uh, pretty amazing uh, all the stuff you're working on. So, uh, hey, you know what? I've uh, What time is it in Japan for you right now? It's 8 o'clock uh, Central. About 11, 11 o'clock in the morning on Friday. 11 in the morning on Friday. Well, listen, uh, it was a uh, absolute pleasure, Joe, to have you well, here tonight. It was great to introduce you, I think, officially here to our Consum, uh, or to our Compass Games community. Uh, we have a lot of uh, big fans of us, uh, and these are all solitaire games. We're pretty much, I mean, you said it was an optional two player and things like that, but across the board, I think we're talking about these are solitaire driven systems and games you're doing. Right. Yeah. The, all, all of the games that we, uh, that I talked about today are, you know, from the ground up, they were designed to be solitaire. So um, I, I've, I've seen too many games, especially pirate games, that were designed first as multiplayer and then a solitaire option. Right, uh, right. And I didn't, I didn't want to do that. So I wanted to make sure it worked properly just as solitaire only. For, for all these games, will the tables have those rules in them or will it, will it flow the same way? Like you said, you don't like the yeah, everything will be with? the same, same, same layout, same design, same game engine. Um, so anybody could that's played one of them can just turn around and pick up and play another one. And it should be there. There are some small differences, but uh, they're basically the same. Now, I want to I want to forewarn you with something I learned about Greg Smith. Uh, Greg Smith's games as solitaire games. And that is, as you get this following, you've already got a big following just based on the number of orders. People love doing fan-based materials and add-ons and modules for these games. So Greg, it started all the way back in 2010 with his Hunter's game. And literally tens and tens of variants and uh, f you know, files available, variants, you name it. I fully expect probably we're going to see the same thing happen with your series, that we're going to see people take your uh, system and look to do some things with it. Um, I would just remind people out there, I think that's a big positive having people contribute from the community. I don't think it takes away from your design at all. We have a, a really a design scope we want to satisfy and for a really satisfactory gaming experience. But after that, you know, all, all bets are off. People can go crazy when they love a game. They could just do all kinds of stuff. 
So uh, I expect we'll right. see some fancy, yeah. maybe we'll see some fancy Schnell boat displays and things like that. <laughs> like the hunters that I saw was this full size map uh, display custom made. It was crazy. People were downloading it like crazy, but no, it's absolutely very, very awesome. And uh, Richard, uh, you, your work is done here, Joe, cause you got an order. So see, you, you got somebody oh, to order right. your game. Thank You're you. very, I, I try to sell these games and the pre-orders and nothing happens. And then you, you get on. <laughs> japan time whatever and you just like start talking and everybody starts ordering your stuff so uh yeah, my gosh thank you. i wanted awesome. to also mention that um all of the games except the pirate the pirate game is a little bit larger but uh, mm -hmm. all three of the the devil boats uh snow boats and dog boats they all have very, about five minutes set up and breakdown times so very quick yeah and uh the very small table footprint uh, that was also very important that it, it had a small footprint. Uh, so that's why the maps are so small. Absolutely. And um, so it, uh, and, and then the play times, uh, I'll be honest, the play times can be quite long. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why I included uh, different game lengths and uh, double boats. Uh, you know, on the back of the box, I believe it says 30 plus hours for the long campaign game. Okay. Oh, uh, it okay. depends. That's kind of exaggerated, probably not that long. Okay. But, I, you know, the, the thing is, is you're not going to finish it all in one sitting. Of course not. Uh, but like I said, it's only about five minutes to, to pack it up. So you can always start again. Do you have like an intro scenario you recommend to get started or is it just a bunch of smaller scenarios you just pick and choose? Oh, scenario, you, you just, it's campaign games only. Oh, it's campaign uh, games only. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there was going to be the PT 109 scenario, but um, yeah, yeah. It, you, it basically it's the campaign of one, two or three months in um, devil boats. And you just try to sink as many barges as possible. And you can also uh, encounter um, uh, Japanese destroyers occasionally. Uh, but you might play an entire campaign and, and not encounter any destroyers. And gotcha. then there are also Japanese float plane attacks, of course. Uh, but but some, some missions you might not encounter any surf enemy surface ships or... Uh, enemy aircraft it, it is possible like in some of greg's like the hunters i believe mm -hmm. you might sometimes you don't encounter anything which is is realistic mm -hmm. sometimes yeah yeah absolutely and then just a good news for your pirates game down the road uh john sai who's out of the philippines said he'll do the dancing part so when we do a kickstarter <laughs> video john's gonna dress up as a pirate right. and yeah, i'm gonna it work with him include the dancing oh. that's one thing <laughs> it's the, you know dancing for the governor's daughter well, you kidnap and assassinate the governor's daughter, a governor's <laughs> daughter in the Pirates game, or torture or whatever, but oh. you don't dance with her. Oh, my gosh. If you oh can boy. marry in the end. You might be able to marry oh. the this governor's getting, daughter. If you oh, my gosh. On. Yeah, oh it's my not gosh. a children's game. It's not, a, it's not a gentle children. This is not a gentle <laughs> thing. This is... This is an adult channel, not, by the way. This is, this is uh, an adult uh, theme here. Okay, yeah, it's, it's an adult Sid Meier's Pirates. Yeah, yeah, and I, oh my gosh! But, well, hey, hey, there you go. That's the history, and we're reflecting the history. And there you go, right? Um, Mo right. makes a good Mo makes a very good point here, which I think, uh, and this is true across the board, but especially we're experiencing we're experiencing this more and more at Tempest Games with our releases, and that is the great value of community support for these games. So you've already said it for play testing and all you've done on play uh, Facebook and other places. Uh, we got the same, we're getting the same uh, spoiled treatment. We're spoiled right now. We get 15, 20 proofers when we ask for one or two. Um, so the community is like, we're, they're like carrying us right now, uh, full, full time. So I think you're going to see tons of community support, uh, Joe, uh, in the future. But I did want to let everybody know, uh, per Mo's message here, they, being that you're in Japan, I just want to warn everybody that Joe might be a fourth degree black belt. And if you're not ordering his game, if you're not ordering his game, I'm going to send the list of all the attendees that watch this live broadcast. And we're going to find out if there's anybody missing because you have to practice your fourth degree back belt, you know, skills, right? So, you know, dojo time. So, so we're going to make, we're going to make sure that, uh, you know, we're, we, we got the power of influence here to make sure everybody's experiencing, experiencing devil boats with all its glory. So they can go on to Schnell boats and all the others and then have fun with some pirates. Doing, doing one one, one thing I let me mention real quick. One thing I forgot to mention for the the game engine for all all of the games is 
uh, there are a lot of die roll modifiers mm -hmm. uh, in yeah. the tables. And uh, some people don't like that, but my, in my opinion, it really adds to the unpredictability and replay value. Uh, no, no two missions in any of the games will ever, ever play the same. There's so many possibilities. It's, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, no, that's great. Great thing to mention. And I know, I, I think it's similar, you know, Greg has, uh, and they're all very good historical points of why those, uh, uh different, uh, modifications are in there. So I, I haven't heard really anybody complain about those modifi modifiers before. So, uh, it seems right. to reflect, so, seems to reflect the history really well. Yeah, some of the tables in, in my games, there are a lot of modifiers. A, a few of the tables have quite a long list. But with practice, uh, you can do them real quickly in your head. It, it yeah. just takes a little bit of time playing it. So. it makes sense. Well, listen, uh, Joe, I want to uh, thank you again so much for being here. It's been wonderful to learn about uh, Devil Boats. Congratulations on your first published release. Uh, we're happy. We're very, we feel, we feel very privileged as Compass that we could uh, ride, ride this uh, project with you all the way through the publication. And uh, now the fun, now the real true fun part begins, especially when you receive your game in Japan. Then you're going to start having fun when you actually get right. your game. So, yeah, so we're really I looking forward for to that. that. Well, thank you so okay, much. Well, thank you uh, and, all right, we'll catch up with you when we get closer to your other games, uh, which I really think will be Schnell uh, Boats next, uh, when we get closer to publication. And then we can we can also talk more about uh, uh, Devil Boats in terms of all the people playing it, etc. So let's let's definitely plan to get together again in the future. And uh, let's just keep okay. making it happen. All right? Okay, thank you very much. Take care. Thank you so much, uh, Joe. Appreciate it. Well, it was an absolute pleasure having... Um, Ah, for me, it's great. I mean, it's a pleasure to meet all these great designers, and it's so exciting if you when you see these first time designers and how they talk about the designs and the journey they've gone on, their own personal journey of uh, people who like messing with games and adding things to them, and you know, uh, just tink tinkering with games turns into this full blown uh, game designer now that's doing multiple games on a system that looks great. That I think, obviously, when you want to wait for everybody's feedback, so by no means are we jumping the gun. Uh, right now, all we can go on is people seem really satisfied with the uh, quality of the game as it's coming in. Somebody mentioned that uh, that the box seemed to have a special finish to it, and uh, I, I, I don't know the details of, uh, of as far as the production of that game. I would have to talk to Bill uh, Thomas to find out that set and finish to the box, if it is different. I don't have the game myself yet, so... I did see the comment about the satin finish of the box, and I'll, I'll make a note on that to see if that's something, if you do like it, or if you guys do like the satin finish uh, on that box, if it does seem different, uh, definitely let me know, because if we're getting positive feedback on that, I want to let uh, Bill know, because uh, that will be great feedback for him. But uh, again, I just want to thank you all so much uh, for being here again. Again, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do that after party now uh, with Mo. Uh, I'll have maybe about uh, five or 10 minutes myself, and then I unfortunately will have to beg off. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode. I can't believe it's episode 47 already of uh, Compass Games Live. I want to thank you so much for being here. Hope everybody's doing is safe and healthy. I understand uh, Armchair Dragoons has their online, uh, their online event coming up uh, very soon. I believe it's next week. It's coming up right around the corner for their virtual gaming event. Please look for it online. Uh, I believe it's been co posted on Constant World News already. It's being posted on Facebook and all over the place right now. So if you can support the efforts of Armchair Dragoons, I know um, Mo, Mo's Table, Maurice Fitzgerald, I know others are also involved. A lot of content contributors to the hobby are really stepping up and helping with these virtual events, uh, which really is a great way to bring us all together to enjoy the hobby until we can meet face-to-face -face again, which will hopefully be the Compass Games Convention in November over Veterans Day weekend. So as always, everybody, I'm gonna bid you a fond farewell for until next week, next Thursday, we'll be joining uh, Bill Thomas for our next uh, episode of our Compass Games Town Hall meeting with you all. And then I'll be following up in two weeks, of course, with another Compass Games live episode. So again, everybody, stay safe out there. I'll be heading on over to our Applebee's Lounge on the Discord server. I look forward to uh, seeing you all there. And again, I just want to wish you all a very good night. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody.